I'd like now to recognize Mrs. Linda Abrams, Associate Professor of Social Science, and she will come presenting Congressman Harold Watson Trey Gowdy III, uh, the degree of Doctor of Laws. President Pettit, in a day when many elected officials have forgotten the meaning of the term public servant, the man standing before you has not. Our honoree has exemplified the concept of public servant for his entire career. After graduating from Spartanburg High School, he attended Baylor University and then law school at the University of South Carolina, where he was a member of the prestigious Order of the Wig and Robe. After law school, he began serving as a public prosecutor and was awarded the highest performance rating two years in a row. In 2004, he was elected as South Carolina's seventh district solicitor. He fought crime through the judicial system and worked tirelessly for victims' rights. He created a Violence Against Women Task Force and implemented a drug mother protocol designed to assist expectant mothers in breaking the cycle of addiction. He took his next step in public service in 2010 when he was elected to the 4th District Congressional seat. Bob Jones University is one of 17 institutions of higher education in the 4th District. Our honoree has demonstrated in Washington the same strong work ethic that he exhibited as a federal prosecutor and a solicitor. He is committed to holding the national government accountable to the people upon which the government is based. He serves with distinction on the House Committees on Intelligence, Ethics, Oversight and Government Reform, and Judiciary, where he also chairs the Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, Homeland Security, and Investigations. This is more committee work than any other member of the U.S. Congress. In January, he was named to the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, the first time in history a member from South Carolina has been named to this important committee. He is married to the former Terry Dillard. They have two children, Watson and Abigail, and two dogs appropriately named Jury and Bailiff. <laughs> During the founding years of the United States, Noah Webster said, in selecting men for office, let principle be your guide. Regard not the particular sect or persuasion of the candidate. Look to his character. The people of the 4th District have certainly heeded the advice of Mr. Webster in their selection of their congressman. It is my distinct honor to present to you for the degree Doctor of Laws, the Honorable Trey Gowdy. Trey, it gives me a great personal pleasure to award this honorary degree to you. Uh, first of all, of our deep respect for your convictions. You are among real friends here. We respect you for your stand for truth and principle. We love you as a native South Carolinian, and we are proud to call you our U.S. Congressman. So when the word came up from our, our board of trustees about honoring you today, we just knew that this would be the right thing. And so thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. And by the charter from the state of South Carolina and the authority vested in me by the board of trustees, I am pleased to confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Laws. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I want to say thank you. It took my father 13 years and really good grades to become a doctor, and it took me an afternoon and mediocre grades. So thank you for 
Thank you for that. I want to thank uh, Bob Jones University, but, but also what I refer to as the Bob Jones community for your contributions, not just to the community and the state and the nation, but literally, as we heard today, uh, to the world. Uh, on a personal level, I want to thank the Bob Jones community for your um, friendship with me, um, especially over the past seven years, but even before that, source of encouragement um, when warranted and a source of accountability um, when needed. So let me say thank you for that. I want to just briefly address uh, the graduates. Uh, you have two of the most uh, incredible commodities known, time and youth. And this is a great time to rest and reflect for just a second. Reflect on the people that helped you get here. Rest and reflect on your accomplishments to this point. Uh, but I have to tell you, uh, the one advantage I have over you in life is I've been your age and you've never been my age. <laughs> 31 years ago, I was sitting where you were sitting, in Waco, Texas. And time goes very quickly. Let me tell you what I wish someone had told me 31 years ago. There is a truth. It is objective. It is identifiable. And there is a model. And his name is Jesus. You need to have a code by which you live that you do not deviate from. Number one, I wish someone had told me there's a code. Find it. There's a model for that code. Live it. Number two, always value education. One of my favorite books in the Bible is the book of Habakkuk. And some of you are wondering whether that really is a book in the Bible. It is a book in the Bible. And I like that book because Habakkuk asks God why. It's okay to ask why. Value education, ask why, ask people how do you know that. But don't ever forget, there is an objective, identifiable truth. Thirdly, help other people. Ms. Abrams mentioned that my wife of 28 years is a teacher. She will help more people in a school calendar year than a member of Congress who serves for three decades. Help other people. Lastly, you will have a choice in life to pursue success as the world defines it, or what I prefer, which is significance. You'll have a choice, success or significance, fame or something more foundational. I work in a city named for George Washington. I fly into an airport named for Ronald Reagan. And every week I have a choice. Which side of the plane am I going to look out of as we descend into the airport? I can look to the left, and I can see the monuments to Lincoln and Jefferson and Dr. King, and I can see buildings and statues and roads named after all the famous people. And there is a temptation, there is an allure to look out the left-hand side of the plane. I would encourage you to resist that temptation and do what I do. Look out the other side of the plane at these very gently rolling hills punctuated by elegant white crosses at a place we call Arlington. And most of us can't name five people there. Be yet those quiet lives of conviction and virtue are what made the country. It's still what makes the country. It's forever what will make the country. Lead a life of conviction and virtue. Choose significance over success. God bless you. Congratulations.